Welcome back to Agriculture Today. We're back now with Roger McOwen from KSU and Washburn University School of Law. He is going to be chatting with us today about a pertinent topic which has resurfaced again in terms of its relevancy, and that is California's Proposition 12. So, Roger, I'm going to let you explain some of the backstory on this piece of legislature, and I'll let you take it from here. Well, good to be with you, Samantha. This is actually, uh, as you mentioned, you used the term resurfaced. I think that's a good term to explain what's happened here, because this is an issue that's been out there for about 10 years. The I was involved a number of years ago, and it's been 10 or 11 years ago, in trying to uh, help a congressman write a provision to include in a farm bill that would prevent states from doing what California has done in this instance, and that's approved Proposition 12, which is basically the state of California saying that if you want to sell pork products in our state, you have to abide by our rules. Now, there's a lot more details than that, but that's basically what it is. That provision that uh, I helped write over a decade ago never made it into a farm bill, and hence now we've got this case that the U.S. Supreme Court has uh, decided to take up, and oral arguments are set for uh, October of this year, October of 2022. Wow. Well, like you said, it's been a long time coming. And as you said, now the Supreme Court has taken up the case and we know that with that comes additional time expected. So where can we really expect to get final say on this? When can we expect to hear that? Uh, Probably sometime in 2023. Usually we're looking probably about four months out from date of oral argument. So in February, March of next year, I I don't think it's going to be one of the opinions that the court waits to release uh, right before the end of the term, uh, as they're doing now with some of the very high profile opinions in late June. So I I think the normal probably four month time frame from date of oral argument would put it sometime in February, maybe into March uh, of 2023 before we get resolution of this particular issue. That's kind of a significant thing to consider because this piece of legislation is already being implemented as of January 1st of this year. It is. Uh, the voters in California Position 12 back in 2018, and the new law took effect January 1 of this year. And what it does is it, it bans the sale of whole pork meat, no matter where it's produced, not just in California, but anywhere else, from animals that are confined in a manner that California doesn't like. Uh, and basically, I call it the hokey pokey law. Um, the, and that's just kind of a, uh, a visual for people to have in their mind as to what California is doing here. They're saying that hogs have to be raised in a pen or in a cage, which allows the animal to stand up and turn around and not touch any of the, any of the sides. And, um, uh, and that's really the issue here is whether California can do that. Now, their purported reasons for doing it are two, uh, one, cruelty to animals, they want to prevent cruelty to animals, and two, health and safety. Uh, so th- those are the purported reasons, and they have to have constitutionally a legitimate state interest for regulating in the way that they are regulating that imposes their rules on uh, on other states. So we shall see. The, the plaintiffs in the case had sued uh, to get a permanent injunction stopping the law from taking effect. The trial court dismissed the complaint, and then on appeal, the Ninth Circuit said that the uh, plaintiffs, the producers in their uh, organizations, had failed to plead what's known as a dormant commerce clause violation. So here we are at the Supreme Court. Wow. Well, you know, what's interesting is we were kind of discussing this beforehand, and what's interesting is that California itself is not a huge producer of pork. Yeah, and that's a key point. I think uh, your comment there was an extreme understatement because they they produce virtually no pork, mm-hmm. but yet the uh, their market they they consume about thirteen percent of all pork products in the United States. Uh, so California is a huge market. So producers in Kansas, in Nebraska, in Iowa, the major pork producing states, they want to be able to access that California market. So what? What those numbers also indicate to me is something very important constitutionally, and that is that the impact of California's Proposition 12 would be almost entirely what we call extraterritorial. It has a, almost a 100% extraterritorial effect. So what California is doing, California producers don't really care about. They're not affected because they don't exist. But yet there are a lot of pork products that are consumed in California that are produced elsewhere. And so California is trying to regulate all of that conduct. 
outside of their jurisdiction. That's where the constitutional question comes in. When when the uh, when the Constitution was created, Congress created the Commerce Clause, and the Commerce Clause says that the Congress has the constitutional authority to regulate interstate commerce. So it's stated in the positive. It doesn't say anything about the states not having the authority. Now, about 150 years ago, in fact, I think we could trace it probably about as far back as almost 200 years ago to a Supreme U.S. Supreme Court case where it was held that the states uh, or in the, in the positive grant of the Commerce Clause, uh, in terms of the positive power granted to the Congress to regulate commerce amongst the states, there was implied in that a negative commerce clause power or a dormant commerce clause, dormant because it's not stated, that the states cannot regulate interstate commerce. But it's not that is not stated in the text of the Constitution. So we have at least one justice on the Supreme Court that does not believe there is any such thing as a dormant commerce clause or a negative commerce clause. And so even if the even if we have a victory for ag in this case and for the pork producers, it will not be a unanimous opinion. Mm-hmm. But with that much said, that implied power of the states, even if the court finds it's there, they must find that a state, in this instance California, has a legitimate state interest in their particular regulation. And California, just to cycle back on that, is saying, well, we're concerned about cruelty to animals, we're concerned about health and safety to consumers of pork products. I guess that's kind of reflected in some of the other minimums that are established in this Prop 12 legislation. It it doesn't just apply to pork. There are some minimum requirements for egg-laying hens and calves raised for veal as well. That's right. Veal, calves, egg-laying hens. And uh, you can't uh, produce any of those types of products in a manner that California doesn't like. Mm-hmm. And uh, they define that as a cruel manner, uh, and they and they give specifications for cage sizes and the, the manner in which animals are fed and raised. And uh, you can't knowingly uh, engage in a, in the sale within California of shell eggs, liquid eggs, whole pork meat, whole veal meat, as defined from animals that are housed in a cruel manner. And that and, and their their statute that they enacted has criminal enforcement provisions in it also. Wow. So this is a big deal for producers that could be thousands of miles from the state of California. And, uh, of course, legislators in, in uh, the state of California are not subject to being voted out of office by the people whom they're regulating. And that's, that's really one of the major concerns in this instance. Can California do this? And I have deep concerns of their ability to do this. I think it is, my view is it is a violation of the Commerce Clause, the Dormant Commerce Clause, but we're going to find out um, sometime in early 2023. Sure. And it's it's also interesting, you know, we, we think about the producers that this is a market that they're wanting to sell to, that 13%, like you mentioned, of, of pork production in the U.S. And it's a market that they're going to want to continue to stay in if they can. But the question really is, is if people are going to have to come thousands of miles, like you mentioned, specifically maybe to Iowa or Kansas to these pork producers to kind of analyze their housing methods and things like that, who's paying for that really in this case? Yeah, well, you can be guaranteed they can kind of set up uh, rules like this and then uh, and then impose the cost on themselves. Uh, that's not going to happen. And this is why we have overlying federal regulation of uh, the production of food products through USDA and APHIS, and we've got the Food and Drug Administration, of course, FTC is out there. They don't all regulate this particular topic, but that's just an explanation of why we have overriding federal regulation in a lot of these areas, simply because it's not cost-effective for every state to try to do this, and we don't have regional differences when it comes to safety and food products and how that production occurs where we would need differences from state to state. So uh, because there is overriding federal regulation on uh, safety with uh, health and safety with respect to food products. I think California's argument here that they need to do this for that purpose, I, I think that's completely flawed. Uh, that really doesn't make sense to me at all. And I don't think that's a legitimate state interest that they need to be worried about. And, I, and that may come back to undercut them at the Supreme Court. 
Well, Roger, we appreciate you and your insight on this case that I know, you know, we're going to be watching at least for the next year or so here. If producers are looking to learn more about Prop 12, is there anywhere they can find more information on it? I have written about that on my blog, and that uh, you can access that through my homepage, washburnlaw.edu backslash Walter, W-A-L-T-R. Also on my page, I have other interviews where I've talked about this and, and other writings, too. So uh, there's a lot of information there that people can find on my website. And if they're familiar with the Supreme Court's website, you can actually go to uh, the Supreme Court's website. If you want to read the detailed filings in the case and the arguments that have been made, that's a good place to go to. That was Roger McOwen. He is our K-State and Washburn University School of Law Ag Law Specialist. And we will be back with more ahead on Agriculture Today.